Right now, in this week's Checkpoint episode, producer Jabli Lembata visits Mangaung Correctional Center to get a better sense of how Tabo Besta escaped. Her visit reveals how lax security remains at the prison. Jabu joins us now in CEO to discuss tonight's episode and what she witnessed at that maximum security prison. Uh, Jabu, thank you so much for coming to tell us about this episode. I'm pretty excited about it. So how did you get into this prison? Firstly, we've been trying to get in there. They always tell the journalists that uh, um, we have no permission. So how did you manage? So what we then did um, is contact a prisoner from the inside. Mm. So he already had a cell phone. He even had a laptop. So he was communicating with us all the time. So then he gave us phone numbers to call and instructed us on what to say in order to be able to go inside. Um, and then we called the numbers, but it was very difficult to go in. Mm -hmm. And then he simply escalated the matter. And then within, you know, a day, we were able to go inside the prison. So um, procedure says that it's, it's supposed to be 48 hours um, before you can go in a visit even after you've arranged a visitation appointment mm. because they need to then take down your contact details, take down um, your identity, and then only you're allowed in. But the prisoner just escalated the matter, and within a day, we were inside the prison. Hmm. So, okay, my next question then, you've sort of answered it, but I wonder, because this was, uh, these were promises made by G4S before, uh, you know, the whole contract situation was announced, as well as the Department of Correctional Services. When you got there, how is security? Does it look like they're doing anything to fix security? Um, I think that was the interesting thing. After such a big escape, you'd expect that security... Um, has been tightened, but that was not the case. When we got in there from the reception, you have very relaxed workers sitting there. Um, you go in through a metal detector. Mm -hmm. Nobody warns you down to check if maybe there's anything up your sleeve. Um, it's very relaxed. You know, nobody's uh, paying too much attention at this person who they don't even know, right? Mm -hmm. um, even after we go in, um, they do now a body search before you enter the visitation hall. Okay. Um, but they pat you slightly. They don't actually check if you've got anything up your sleeve. Um, they don't check. Um, they don't t make you take off your shoes. You know, they don't check so as no much as... No, none of that. So you go into this visitation hall again where there's only just two unarmed security guards at the far end. Mm. There isn't any other security guard maybe, you know, patrolling, going up and down to monitor you guys. There's none of that. It's quite relaxed, I must say. Hmm. You'd think that they would have uh, sorted that out by now. They're too relaxed, it sounds to me, for a maximum security uh, correctional center. But with your, with your um, experience of going there, how do you rate the relationship between the prisoner and the prison warders? It's clear that, um, you know, the prisoners have some power because for us to even go in so quickly, mm -hmm. it showed that this prisoner has power to escalate our visitation, you know, and we're journalists. We were there to investigate and see for ourselves what is it that is actually happening there. And it was quite shocking to see the things we found. Um, so you can see that prisoners have relationships with the prison warders because it's, it's quite relaxed. Security is very relaxed. There's no one, you know, on guard to check that, you know, something is going on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. They've got quite a close relationship. Even, you know, some of the footage you'll see in the show, um, we received from the prisoner, which gets it from the guards, you know? So basically, uh, uh, my understanding is that a maximum security prison has the most uh, dangerous convicted criminals. And this is how relaxed they are. But Jabu, I understand that your investigating went um, even further than the prison. Can you tell us a bit more about that without giving too much? Um, so we also uh, went into the government mortuary where Katleko Bering's body was supposed to be, right? Mm. Um, and one of the interesting things that we found by speaking to one of the workers there uh, is just how simple it was for Unandipa to claim the body. She actually says it in the show, you'll hear for yourself. She actually just mentions how easy it was for Unandipa to come in there, claim she's related to this body mm. and just take it. So that's something that you'll see tonight on the show. Mm. All right, so uh, for the viewer, you will catch a, um, a checkpoint tonight at 9 p.m. Please don't forget, this is where you'll uh, get to see Jabli Lembata's investigation into the lax security at the Mangaun Correctional Facility. This is where Tabo Besta, a serial rapist and murderer, escaped for about a year without being detected.